Today we're playing Orzhov. It's absolutely one of my favorite guilds to work with, and we're sort of leveraging an aggro control hybrid here. Goonies never say die, and neither does anything in this deck. The recursive threats just keep coming back and coming back and coming back until our opponent can't deal with them anymore. Let's check it out. So the entire point of this deck is just to get a two drop onto the field and have it never go away. You just swing with it every turn. So we have four seasoned hollow blades and then two skyclave shade. And in the case of the hollow blade, we just make sure we always have cards in our hand. We're discarding it whenever they try to remove it and they can never take it off the field. With skyclave shade, it's like every time they get rid of it, we just bring it back by landfalling. And there's actually some synergy there where we can actually discard the Skyclave Shade to our Hollow Blade in order to give it indestructible until end of turn to survive a piece of removal or, or trading with the creature or something like that. And then we can drop a land, landfall, and actually play the Skyclave Shade that we just discarded to the Hollow Blade from our graveyard. Um, so that's, that's the basic concept of the deck, is like we get the two drop down, they can never deal with it, it swings every turn, and eventually they just die. They, ru they run out of answers. Um, part of how we do this is with Demonic Embrace. So we run three copies, all we need to do is get to one, and just like the Skyclave Shade, we can play this from our graveyard. So we can discard it to the Hollow Blade to give it indestructible if we want, and then discard something else later to play it from the graveyard on the Hollow Blade. Or we can play it on the Skyclave Shade. And when they remove the Skyclave Shade, both will go to the graveyard, we landfall, we replay the Skyclave Shade, discard something, replay the Embrace, and we're right back. So we're basically swinging six points of evasive, is it, evasive power every turn, just coming at their face, um, and it's really, really hard to get rid of. So the rest of the deck is kind of supporting that theme. So we've got like one copy of Shadow Spear, because it makes those creatures more powerful and gets us back a lot of the life that we're spending on some of the other cards in the deck. Um, we've got one Legion Angel, because it sort of supports that same, same sort of concept where if we get the first one onto the field, we're making them waste their removal and we just keep grabbing more copies. We've also got two Felidar Retreats. Now, a lot of the cards we're playing will also synergize with Shatter the Sky. What's great about Shatter the Sky is we can play Shatter the Sky and keep our other threats alive. So like, we play Shatter, we discard something to Seasoned Hollow Blade to give it indestructible, and it survives the Shatter. Or we play Shatter, our Shade dies, we bring it back. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, all of their creatures go away because of the Shatter. So playing our own board wipes in the deck is actually really good tech where where we're taking it's basically like a, a one-sided wrath where we're taking out their side and our side just either sticks around or keeps coming back so getting back to felidar retreat that kind of sticks with that that theory is we play the felidar retreat all of our lands are making two twos for free that are gonna that are gonna stick around if we shatter those cards were kind those creatures were kind of free to begin with and we just drop more lands and make more so we're not losing card advantage by uh having those creatures die to the shatter also the felidar retreat is great because once we do have some creatures on the board we can start getting plus one plus one counters and getting a plus one plus one counter onto a seasoned hollow blade especially while it has a demonic embrace on it is really really powerful if we can build this guy up big enough and we keep giving it indestructible eventually it'll just get there um, same thing with the Legion Angel. Great with Shadow of the Sky because if we take out our own Legion Angel, we draw a card off of it and we're getting more Legion Angels out of our sideboard when we play it so we don't really lose any card disadvantage. And, and that's kind of what a lot of the creatures are in this deck. So like we're running Murderous Riders and Giant Killers because we can use them as instant speed removal and then the creature side of them is just gravy. So if we play the creatures and they end up dying to our own Shatter, it's not that big of a deal because we already got our value off of them and it's not card disadvantage. We're also running four Agonizing Remorse because taking out what they have in their hand is key. If they're running an extinction event or any kind of exile removal, we need to make sure they can't use those. Um, th those are really the only pieces of removal we have to worry about. If they exile the Hollow Blade or the Shade, a lot of times we're in trouble. But if we can keep those out of their hand, 
with something like Agonizing Remorse, then we're fine. Uh, rounding out the deck, we've got three copies of Blood Chief's Thirst because it's just amazing removal. It's a shock early game. It can take out anything, including Ugin in the late game. Absolutely nuts. We run uh, Hagra Mauling in the, in the land base because once we get enough lands late game, we can use it as more removal. It's great. Two copies of Elspeth Conger's Death. We can remove things that aren't creatures with this, which a lot of times is really important. But most importantly, on the third page, we can get back something from the graveyard. So if they do manage to somehow get rid of a Hollow Blade, or we lose something else that's important, we can get it back with the ECD. We've got two copies of Skyclave Apparition, and we can use this in really techy ways with, with our Shatter. You know, if we know we're going to Shatter and we've already used the Skyclave Apparition to deal with a threat, we can sort of line up a, a block that looks bad, and we lose the apparition and they get a token, knowing that we're going to shatter the sky and just get rid of that token. Um, the last few cards, we've got four Maria's Call, because if we hit it late game, we make all of our guys indestructible. It's just, it's a closer and it's great. And then we've got two Ondo Inversion, because on the off chance that we do draw into it in the late game, it's another way to wipe the board, whereas we can, we can keep our stuff around. In the same way that when we wipe with Shatter the Sky, we keep our stuff around or we get it back, we can do the same with Ondo Inversion. It's expensive and it will rarely come up, but having the extra two potential copies without really sacrificing much, because in the meantime they're lands, it really helps. And the most important card I want to get to is Castle Lockthwain. So there aren't many ways to draw cards in this deck. We run a full play set of Castle Lockthwain because we need... We absolutely need the card draw to fuel things like Seasoned Hollow Blade. So getting Castle Lockthwain down, getting it online, and then using the card draw from Castle Lockthwain to generate card advantage to keep Seasoned Hollow Blade alive is a really important part of the deck. Um, and a lot of times, like, we've only got the three Murderous Riders and the one Shadow Spear to gain back life. So it's really important that we use those very carefully and that we use our Castle Lockthwain very carefully. But... In the end, the deck's great. You know, there, there's a lot of card advantage here. There's a lot of two-for-ones. And uh, just, if you play it right, nothing ever dies or stays dead. It's, Goonies never die. Let's check out the games. We'll lead with the inversion. Play it as a land. Then we'll play the Shade. Because if he kills the Shade, it literally costs us nothing to get it back. Whereas if we lead with the Hollow Blade and he targets that, we actually do have to discard a card. Then again, we can discard the Shade. Which is kind of nice. Yeah, let's do that. Turn. Looks like he's thinking about how to deal with it. Feel like he has instant speed removal that he wanted to play, but he was just going to lose it. We're going to move to attacks first. So that we can get him to use his removal. Then we can play a land. And replay the shade. <coughs> Out of the graveyard. Enter. Extinction event will be really bad here. Sure. One, two, I 
agonizing. What do we want to hit? We're not worried about his creatures at all, right? Artifact. Creature with flying. I'm not really worried about that yet. Honestly, the most worried about Croxa. Let's get rid of Croxa. And replay the Skyclave Shade. Just all of the value. Just keeps coming back for more. Resolve. Resolve. He needs to land for sure. My turn. Hmm. So many things. What's he going to play next turn? I guess we just uh, pile on the aggression here. I'm going to keep the call to get back the shades. Because if he kills both of them, we drop one Amarius call and we can replay them both. Which is awesome. And now I think we just win. Because we can kill his dude with targeted removal and then just swing in for 9. Feels pretty good. Yep. There we go. We got... Sand's a little weird. We'll keep it though. Haha, <laughs> good. I want to see it in action. And I don't have the resolve to try to put that thing together myself. Not, not without seeing it in action first, so... You put it together and we'll <laughs> we'll watch it over on your channel. Oh uh, yeah, keep this. So I think we lead with a fabled passage into a plains here. It does mean we're committed to playing out all three of our lands and not holding any of them back for fodder for Hollowblade. Which is a little bit worrisome, but we need we need the mana. Because we have to play the swamp before we play the castle. And there's no way we're tossing the castle. We might toss the ECD to be honest. Fetch that planes. Okay, now we have some fodder. Go like this. Pass turn. Come on in. The water's great. Don't think we kill him before he kills us in this situation. I think we just hold up for now. We can use one of our removal spells at the end of his turn. And since we know he's scared of attacking through the hollow blade, it's 
much better to do that than to trade damage at this point. Gets rid of the Rimrock Knight. And I like that. I like that a lot. We'll do some swinging. And we will actually play the Swamp here because we want to get Castle online. Yeah, it's super fun. I think it's really competitive, to be honest. Just, it's really, really hard to deal with Skyclave Shade and Season Hollow Blade, so just sticking them in the same deck. And then putting Wraths in it. It's just good. I don't think he can race me. don't think he can race me. We could just put this boy out. <clears throat> Make life really hard. I don't have it in this version, but I was considering running it. I had it in the build and took it out last minute. Um, and it will probably make its way back in at some point. Oh, scoops. Gussie. This is a very weird hand. We'll keep it. We just have to be aggressive as hell, I guess. Bandy boy snoring. My pupper is snoring. I don't know if you guys can hear him. We'll lead with Amaria's call as a land. We'll go Black Solus, play a Hollow Blade. Next turn. Resolve the Burst. What is he playing? Well. Get our dudes out while we can. Swing in for some damage. Play another Ameria. And pass the turn. We're swinging with both. One of them will get blocked. Oh, that's so feel bad. What do we do? I think we just have to let them die. We could discard the giant killers. I'm going to discard one giant killer. Diversify my options here. If 
fetch a swamp. Or the Legion Angel. Pass the turn. Sure. Alright, so he's playing Doom Foretold. For sure. For sure. We just need to be super aggressive. And turn. We need to hold on to the Amaria's call because we'll probably need to discard it to keep Hollow Blade alive. Does he have a Shatter? He does. We'll draw a card. It's actually really good for us. We need cards to keep Hollow Blade alive, so... Does he have another shatter? Enter. I don't think he does. What does he go for? Oops. It doesn't matter what he goes for. Alright, two lands. That is not optimal. We are so far away from all of the things. I think we keep it, though. All we need is one land, and... Both of, both of these are online. Or either Murderous Rider or Apparition can get online. We'll try it. We will try it. We'll lead with the castle. Because I don't think there's a way to make it come into play untapped. We'd have to get really lucky. to kill that flourishing fox with the thirst. Cycle Schmeichel. And then, do we play this as white or black? I guess we play it as white. to keep our options open. If we draw another black, this whole side we get access to. If we draw another white, this whole side we get access to. And I guess it's the white. We're gonna have to do this. And this. We'll see if he's Zenith Flares, the Apparition or not. Yeah, this deck, right? <sighs> Obnoxious. My my goat deck did great against it though. That was fun. It's got what six in the in the grave. Problem is we take two damage with the rider. I don't really like that, but I think we I'm gonna do something else. 
I'm gonna play it as the creature. We're taking a gamble here. He can't swing in for more. So my hope here is he doesn't have the Zenith Flare. We can embrace the Rider next turn, swing in for a bunch of lifelink. And that should put us out of Zenith Flare reach. It feels bad to not use the Swift End, but I think that's just what we needed to do. And a chump blocker. We need to keep our life total high so that he can't Zenith Flare us. Ooh. Another stinger. That's okay. Because <clears throat> next turn we can Wrath. It's all part of the plan. So we chump here, we give him his 2-2. He didn't do it. Hmm. Hmm. Come on. Come on. Damn you. Damn you! We don't want him to have a 2-2. When we're done. <clears throat> but unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to. We need to shatter. So if he draws a Zenith Flare, we're going to be in a rough spot. Oh wait, he can't use it this turn. He can't use it this turn. We're okay. Shatter again. Play out the castle. Life gain, that's how we deal with this. Whole lot of life gain. So if he draws the Zenith Flare, we're dead. But if he doesn't draw the Zenith Flare, we can actually recover here. We have one turn. One turn where we're susceptible. He's gonna dig for it. Nope, he hit a land. Not too shabby. I think the Felidar Retreat's actually more important than the Blood Chief's Thirst. Because we can make our Murderous Rider bigger and gain more life. So we're going to dump the Thirst. He does have haste. Haste on whatever duty pulls down. But, I think the extra life game means that's not going to matter. The only thing that matters right now is Zenith Flare. Nice. Play the retreat. And as wasteful as it might seem, all that matters right now is the lifelink. So we're going to grab a counter, and not a 2-2. We just have to put ourselves out of Zenith Flare Reach as much as possible. Not to mention the extra life means we can actually activate our castles. There we go. Das East Fine. Black. Make a 
two, two. Castle. Draw a card. He doesn't want us to draw a card, apparently. Mm, where's he at? We can't risk it. We can't risk the embrace. He gets into a zenith flare and we're just dead. We would have lost three life to replay the, the embrace. We can't keep this, we have no black. This is fine. Toss back the ECD, since we're not playing it anytime soon. We're gonna lead with Amaria's Call tapped. Turn two, Hollow Blade. Turn three, we kill something with Giant Killer, most likely. At least that's the hope. Pass the turn. True. Plays more lands, says more go. Sure. Swing. Grasp of Darkness. Hey, thanks, Waldo. Appreciate it. It's good to see you hang for a while. If, uh, if you're on when I get off, I'll send a raid over to you. We're going to have to resolve this, unfortunately. There's nothing we can do about it. It's sad. Is feels bad. <laughs> it's fine, Waldo. Honestly, the fact that you gave me any bits is super appreciated. Kind of at the point where I'm not I'm not worried about that stuff yet. You know, just trying to get comfortable with the channel. So anything's appreciated for sure. All right. Ruin crab is a asshole. But I think we can afford to take the hit to start making some tempo plays. We can kill it later. Ow. We need to race him. And he probably has a ton of removal. So I don't know if we can. We're gonna try. We are certainly going to try. We need to slow him down. He's not going to have any big creatures, so we're just going to play the giant player out, uh, the giant killer out. We don't need to wait to use the chop down. Pass turn. We're not going to crack that yet. Just in case we get a Felidar retreat. Yes, there we go. Shade in the grave. That's what I like to see. Whew, he is, he is milling up a storm. Alright, so we're gonna crack this. We're gonna keep the pathway in our hand for now. Maximum. 
value. We're gonna kick it. Let's see if we eat his last counter spell. Wow. What a lucky fellow. He is certainly a lucky fellow. End turn. Painful. We are at seventeen cards. Discard a Fatal Passage. Do we get a counter spell or a removal spell? Of course we do. Do it anyway. I don't need your permission. <sighs> We're close. We are very close. We're going to hold the castle in case we need to bring back the shade. Ooh, landfall. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're going to barely win. We're going to one card in our deck, and then we're drawing it on our draw step. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so close. So that was our nutty Orzhov aggro control deck. Um, the channel's still new, so we'd appreciate it if you could give us a like, maybe subscribe, leave a comment. And until next time, may your opponent be running anything at all except for Extinction Event after you drop out all your Skyclave shades.